Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I am Yusuf Akogu. Let's take our business top stories. Glad to have you back. Now we go to the stock market to give you highlights of how the stock market went down yesterday on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The market closed in a positive territory. There is a rebound from what we had from the previous day uh, trading session. 0.16% it ended and of course uh, 620.982 uh, million volume of trade value at 7.180 uh, billion naira and it deals of uh, uh, today is less than a uh, uh, double digit 7,972 deals exchange hands among investors. Look at the top gainers quickly. Uh, of course uh, NJS group itself is on the gainers table yesterday. 10% uh, you gain a huge number there to close at 26 naira uh, 40 cobo per share 9.95 percent gain recorded by sepla sepla this is from the energy uh, uh, oil and gas uh, sector 1830 37 naira per share it closed the day on uh, thursday trans sex trans trans express uh, also closed positive day 9.37 percent closed at one naira and five we look at the top losers from the markets yesterday, Multiverse from the mining sector uh, closing a negative there by 10% to close at 2 naira 70 cobo per share. Nascon there also there 9.81% to close at 50 naira 55 cobo per share. Of course, Honeyflower completing the top three losers 8.11% to close at 3 naira. 40 cover per share. Let's look at the top traded equities by numbers. Of course, 161 million volume of shares traded by Sterling Bank yesterday at uh, two bank. Transcorp Nigerian PLC 136 million volume of shares of that company exchange hands among investors yesterday. Why Fidelity Bank traded 57.6 million volume of shares on Thursday. We look at the sectoral performance. Of course, largely uh, it's three over two today. Of course, the banking sector 0.33 percent it gain. The industrial sector is down zero. 0.01 percent in consumer sector also down 1.14 percent apparently the biggest loser of the day of course the oil and gas sector with the with that support from seplat 5.42 percent the biggest sector again in terms of a uh, sector there of course the insurance sector down 0.38 percent uh yesterday these are the sectoral performance from yesterday trading we look at the rest of africa largely in red we're seeing today jesse in Jobog is down 0.34 percent we go to ghana the west africa neighbor 0.43 percent it ended and in nairobi kenya the market also went down 0.27 percent these are the highlights of stock trading on the continent on thursday as usual the stock market trading is all on across major uh, markets across africa and i will give you update right here on business daily but now we're going to go on a very short break to bring you this track up by the minister of state for petroleum resources hennekin lopoberry don't go away our own you know objective is to ensure that in the next few years nigeria stops for importation and that's why we're here you know to see the extent of work done and we're satisfied with what we have seen here from what we have seen here, Potakot will come on board by the end of the year. Wari will start by the first quarter of next year. And then Kaduna will come and stream towards the end of next year. If we add that together with Dangote Refinery, we'll be able to, you know, stop foil importation by taking, you know, substantial part of our forex. 
and Nigerians, you know, can now have the benefit of having, you know, uh, uh, the benefit of food food regulation. We know gas is very, very important, and we have it in abundance. So the issue is that of trying to gather the gas to generate power supply and other applications that you need gas in the country. And the government is very desperate about it, intentional, that they will be able to bring in foreign investors to invest in the gas. And of course, to try and stop the gas flaring, which in which case there is a policy to stop that and they are complying with what we have received, the brief you have received today. There is hope for Nigeria that the gas flaring will stop and gas generation <coughs> will increase. Glad to have you back. The, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and of course his gas counterpart giving uh, assurances to Nigeria with regards to fixing of Nigerian refinery and of course ending fuel importation. That is what we're looking at this morning on Business Daily. Have joining me in the studio is an energy expert and of course the National Chairman Interparty Advisory Council Engineer Yabagi Yusuf Sani. Glad to have you on Business Daily. Thank you, Yusuf. Yes, Thank sir. you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Good to have you here. So you, you've listened to the two ministers of petroleum resources and that of gas. Uh, the issue of ending fuel importation, many ministers have actually made that promise over the years. We've not seen them come into pass. What will make this one different? Well, I believe that um, what will make this one different is the person we have in the saddle as the president of the country. Uh, he's somebody who I believe given his own uh, background, meaning his track record, mm. uh, coming from maybe a business community, so to speak, because he has uh, <coughs> establishments mm. that uh, into business, <clears throat> and also being a Democrat all his life, you know, from what I, I guess, I'd, of course, what I know, rather. Uh, I believe that we must get it right, because there's an urgency of now to fix this economy. And there's no better place to look than the oil and gas sector mm. because <clears throat> from the macroeconomic point you find that it's the dominant sector that runs our macro economy whenever the crude oil price goes up directly it affects our structures that is the fundamentals of this economy mm. which means you find your foreign exchange you know, uh, maybe going up or down, you will find that uh, the uh, all the other sectors of the economy are affected. You know, the vital aspect of the economy, like mm -hmm. your GDP, your unemployment, and the inflation, and all these things. Once there is something that happens in the uh, oil, crude oil and it's gas sector, sector exactly. you know, at the macro level, mm -hmm. and why is this so? It is so because we have left that sector uh, in the just anyhow kind of arrangement or, or, or management. Mm -hmm. so is, it no is, it, is it about the framework that we are applying? Because some oil producing nation, when the prices of crude is high at the international market, they tend to celebrate more. But in Nigeria, yeah. we suffer more here. Yeah, we suffer more because we have left the fundamentals, you know, in the hands of those that have no interest mm. you know in in, uh, uh, in the welfare of the people of this country or they do not see their uh, the the growth in the economy of this country mm. impacting on their own lives individual mm. lives mm. because they can dip their hands into the treasury they can circumvent you know the process they can steal directly even the crude oil itself mm. and then the money will come directly into their pockets so they don't have any uh, uh, consideration or concern you know for how does it impact the macro economy of this country that's the point i'm trying to make mm. you leave the most important sector of the economy in the hands of i don't know what name to use people that are literally 
you know, thieves because it has been proved mm -hmm. that we are losing crude oil to theft. Mm -hmm. So whoever is the manager there must be a thief too. Otherwise, for so long, we've been talking about a hundred millions of barrels of crude oil that we are losing every day, every day and nobody's doing anything about it. So which means there must be some complicity, you know, mm. that, that is, even the managers themselves are thieves. Otherwise, they would have stopped the, the, the outside thieves, you know, from continuing to steal our, uh, uh, resources. Uh, our resources. Mm. So this is why, that's why I say the man in the saddle today, you know, I'm sure will, will live up to expectation by checking those you know infractions those the stealing that i'm talking about because it's a reality that nigeria is being stolen blind mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and people at him of affairs turn blind eye to it they don't even you know i mean since naiti has been brought bringing out reports that oh, every year you are the, losing the last reports yeah mm -hmm. you are losing close to four billion dollars or three mm -hmm. billion dollars which is what nmpc says and uh, uh this exim bank that they are going to bring to to cushion the effect i mean to mm -hmm. to yeah, support billion, the naira. three billion dollars three billion dollars mm -hmm. that's what naiti says we are losing in fact it's more than that mm -hmm. year in year out so if, if it's not that you have thieves that are in charge of that sector, mm. they could have reduced it, you know, to some level that I'm, I'm not saying that other countries do not have uh, some uh, leakages, uh, leakages mm. you know, financial leakages. Mm. But not the order of the day as we have it here. Mm. That even the official report that will detail to you where the losses are coming from and nobody does anything. Mm. They're not, so, they not being looked into. So, so the, the, the two ministers who have uh, said that they are going to turn things around for the better for Nigerians. Well, we wait and see, mm. because we have heard so much about this. And my regret is that Mr. President has, up to today, up to this point in time I'm talking to you, has not beamed his searchlight into probing the oil and gas sector. You know, what he has done to, to CBN, the same thing should be done to NMPC. And I'm saying it because there are two subsidies that have put us where we are today. It's two subsidies. One is the subsidy on the petroleum product. Another one is the subsidy on Naira, that the dollars that we've been spending to sustain Naira, mm. you know, at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the artificial level mm. that it has been. So, okay, you've, you've, you are dealing with the one form of sector, mm. you know, by taking the people in charge, you know, to, 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 to explain mm. what happened. Mm. But you have left, in fact, the main sector where even the, the CBN was getting the money that you are, you are now probing them because where else are they getting the money from? From the CBN. It's from the crude uh, from oil. the uh, NNPC. It's from the NNPC. Mm. So why are we chasing shadows? Why don't we address the issue? So if you come, you have ministers who want to deliver, but the structure, you know, the organization itself mm. is not it, suited to do that. Uh, absolutely. Then, then you are, we are just we are just wasting our time. Let's, and energy. let's assume that the president is taking his time to. No, no, he shouldn't take time. By the time he faces. No, he uh, doesn't NNPC. have the time. He doesn't have the time. That's what I'm saying. Mm. He does not enjoy the luxury of time. We must understand the reality. If we really love this country and we want to succeed, and by the grace of God, we are going to succeed on this democracy. But, but we but, must but do with, it. Well, but with him as the substantive minister of petroleum resources, don't you think uh, uh, that uh, sector is so uh, dear to his heart and he's quite, uh, planning? But action quite must be taken. Action must be taken. Area. We have had ministers of petroleum resources from the time of Obasanjo to up to Buhari, and and uh, what has happened? Nothing has changed. It is still the same business as usual. Mm. Nigeria has been losing. Everybody knows this. Even mm. the man on the street, he knows that there is humongous, you know, amount of money that we are losing to theft, you know, in the in the most important sector of our economy. And care is not taken. There are two things that are very important, you know, to, to survival of every country. What is it? Democracy, mm. you know, is very important. We must sustain democracy. Your economy is very important. Mm. This the synergy between these two things is very strong. If you don't take care of the main source of your economy mm. that, 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 uh, that runs your economy, you are, you, you are just joking. Mm. You know? And that's why I'm calling on Mr. President to, to go into NMPC, the oil and gas sector. Let them bring out that, those 90 reports, even if you don't want to work with other hearsay reports that you think are not uh, something to work with. Mm. This is documented evidence that mm. things are going wrong, are not being done in line with what we should do. Mm. Why am I saying so? Oil and gas sector has backward and forward linkages with all the remaining sectors of the economy. 
ask a question why is that sector that has such a dominant you know influence mm. on other sectors of the economy contributing so little to our gdp you know the last time Absolutely. i checked what was contributing has even gone down by about i don't know like nine percent or something like that. i don't know how much mm. it has gone down mm. to yeah. about six percent or something like that to gdp it's less than five less than six percent less than six percent to gdp point, four, so five, why five, should six, it be so you mentioned other countries that are jubilating whenever oil you know the price goes up because they have done the right things they have reinvested the revenue that comes fr from the from the from the oil and gas mm. into the other sectors of the economy. That's what people are talking about diversification, so that your agriculture sector will also be booming. You will have uh, the gas minister was talking about the fact that we are a gas country. Yes, if you have about is it about 1.8 trillion uh, cubic, cubic feet, of, feet gas, of gas? Yes, as your reserve. You have over almost 40 billion, un un 40 billion crude oil, you know, uh, unutilized, mm. and then you are you are flaring it. He says flaring will stop. Flaring will not stop. I'm telling him because why the penalty on flaring is so little mm. that it doesn't encourage anybody to stop flaring. Mm. Is he going to increase the penalty on on flaring of the crude oil? Is he going to install meters that will meter how much you have flared? Mm. There are no meters there today. Uh, absolutely. Maybe, maybe you know. perhaps we need a political will from the. From from Mr. President to exactly, he must wake up. That. He must step to the plate, step mm. up to the plate, mm. and then face the 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 the, 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 the cancer that is, is really eating deep into the fabrics of the economy of this country. Jeez, and funny. we don't have the time. He doesn't have luxury of time. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go into another uh, area still uh, in the oil and gas sector. Uh, we uh, already uh, it's a public knowledge the first subsidy is gone. That is what the Mr. President told us. But it appears that it's not totally gone. Uh, with what we are saying with regard to landing costs of petroleum marketers are already complaining the landing costs uh, are start uh, w based on what the marketers are saying it's about 651 naira uh, per liter now if you compare that to the current price it means we are paying subsidies somewhere that probably the government is not telling us no, no government doesn't need to tell you because there's no economy even the ultra uh, capitalist systems like america if you want that mm. is uh, say according to you uh, to you according to your ability in the system uh, does not uh, run without subsidy there are f f so many forms of subsidy in fact bigger than what we are doing here in terms of in percentage of subsidy to gdp what they are paying there is is high, much higher than, but the management of the subsidy is what matters People that are in charge of managing those subsidies are responsible, you know, individuals. You know, they don't steal the subsidy that is supposed to go to the to the people. Mm. Well, that's what is wrong with our own situation. There's never a, a, a can you can't point to any economy that does not give subsidy. Mm. So it's not wrong for, but, for, but it for government. it depends on what you are subsidizing. What you are subsidizing and how are you subsidizing it? Mm. You know, for instance, I mean, there's no when you, when you discover that people are bringing vessels, empty vessels, and are sub submitting fake. You know, uh, the bill of lading, mm. and they are collecting money, inspiring to the bank. You know, in collaboration with people who are managing the subsidies, the NMPC people, and the whatever other agencies that are in charge. And government is aware, you know, because probes have been taking place long before this. You know, mm. even the House of Assembly conducted probe that proved that yes, our money is being stolen. In fact, some of the members, punished. some of the members, you know, are, are still in jail because they try to compromise and then mm. uh, the, the system mm. then themselves want to uh, partake. So, which means it's not that hearsay, it's not a hearsay that we are, the money is being stolen and this huge sense of money, you did nothing. So, mm. I don't know what they are going to do now. Subsidy is a reality in every economy. Because what are you trying to do? You are trying to make the economy to be efficient. Mm. And the only way the economy can be efficient is if government and, you know, tries to see those weak links in the economy and strengthen them. That is why you introduce you know, subsidy. So that the weak links, like, like the masses mm. who, who cannot measure up you know, to, 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 to perform their functions, mm. which is productive functions also, mm. you know, if transportation, the transport uh, uh, companies cannot operate, you know, and you say, oh, to then let, let them go and uh, you know, uh, uh, fend for themselves, mm. or labor people cannot pay. You know, they 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 are they are they are workers. Exactly. The economy will ground to a halt. That's why governments all over the world look at such strategic, you know, nodes or links in the economy, mm. and then say, okay, let's give some uh, uh, impetus here. Mm. Let's give but, some dumpers here. Mm. You know, so but, so the problem is not the subsidy itself. 
the problem in Nigeria is the management of the subsidy. The subsidy. But they, some are saying that the issue of subsidy in Nigeria is even self-inflicted because as uh, the largest oil producing nation in, nation in Africa, we should be able to have at least two, three or four fire refineries working up at optimum but level. you know why they are not as working? As it is right now, they are all not working. We you have know, to you know why they are not working? You know why they are not working? Product. You know why they are not working? If they work, it will be against the interest of people who are running our oil and gas sector. Why? Not because against the, it's not against the interest of Nigeria. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's for the interest of Nigeria that you even build in the first instance. Hmm. When Buhari, Buhari, uh, President Buhari built there in the uh, 70s or something like that, it was because they understand the fact that we need refineries in this economy if we are oil producing country. But what, what has happened? What has happened is that the managers of oil and gas discovered that if they allow these refineries to function, they will not be able to steal. The 450,000 to 440,000, uh, 40, I think it is, you know, per barrel mm. of crude oil that is allocated for domestic, you know, uh, refining. Mm. So they killed the refineries, and this is now available to them to trade with. So they end commission. And not only that, they now again end commission when they now appoint their cronies as companies to import, you know, the petroleum subsidy, which they deny you mm. from your refinery because they've killed your refinery deliberately. Mm. So they now have. Two, two ways by which they are earning commission. They earn by selling this, you know, that's supposed to be used in your refinery, and they now import, and they earn interest from that end too. So that's why it's not in their interest at all for the refineries to, to, to work. To work. Mm. So has the sustainable stop that? Mm. Well, well, why is it difficult for us to put faces or names to some of these cabals? You appointed people into that, to, that, to those, uh, that, forget about any cabal. Mm. You know, your cabal are your own officials that you appointed. You, know, you have people in NMPC, people mm. in the oil sectors. You appointed them, you are paying their salaries. You know them. You know their bank account before they become uh, whatever they are. Mm. So which face do you want again? Who is going to name who? A faceless individual that you don't know? Wow. Deal quite, with quite, your man that you put there. Uh, quite a whole lot of issues there in the petroleum sector. Let's look at these challenges that the marketers are facing. Even assessing, assessing forests, many of them are still not uh, able to import the petroleum product as it is now. It's only NNPC that is still the sole importer. What do you think should be done? Because what we were told that when subsidy was removed was that the market is liberalized. Uh, everybody with the licenses can go ahead and import, but that is not the case right now. Yeah, it can never be the case until you deal with the source of the problem. Mm. And the sort of problem is that where you are going to earn your dollars for now, because you have locked up your economy into just one to become one mono economy, mm. you know, uh, mono product economy, mm. which is the crude oil and, uh, sector, isn't it? Mm. And even that sector, you left it in the hands of people that are thieves themselves, because it is documented evidence that we are losing billions of dollars from that sector. Mm. Nobody has been taken before the court. Mm. Nobody has been given a letter to explain to our knowledge. You know, so what is happening? Is it that the people in the presidency are working hands in gloves with the people in NMPC? That's why they cannot be touched? Are they suckered cows? Mm. Indeed. Eh? So, which means that something has to be done and done quickly. Otherwise, it will be, it will be, it will be a disaster. Because if the economy cannot perform, Nigerians have had enough already. Believe you me, of this this uh, this uh, hardship mm. that is happening, yeah, I, I, Mr. President has the ability. He has the knowledge. You know, he's not a novice. Mm. You know, he knows what is happening. He must take action. And like like he announced the the, the disappearance of the of the first subsidy, mm. he must also announce the reforms in the sector itself. Uh, uh, you can't have a basket case and you put putting like uh, the, the 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 minister of finance when he was being uh, interviewed at the, the Senate that we have a, a a case of a bucket that you are pouring you know uh, uh, something into and it's, it's just it's you know just leaking away. away. So mm. the, the, our economy is a basket case. Mm. We must realize that, and we do know. Mm. What I'm waiting for is action to be taken. Mm. There's no other way about it. If you don't take action, believe you me, we are just fooling, fooling each other. Us, um, I mean, moving this right. And, and then we'll be worse off. We'll be worse off because these thieves that you have in that place, mm. they already have billions of dollars in their accounts, you know, outside this country. Mm. You know, uh, uh, they, they'll, uh, just, they'll uh, just disappear. Uh, uh, absolutely. Well, let's uh, look at which is about 100 days of this government in power now. Let's uh, see, has your hope been renewed so far? Like I've been telling you, if you read my lips, mm. you know, I've been saying that Mr. President has not stepped up to the plate yet mm. in dealing with this economy. You know, to deal with this economy, you must change the scenario we have in the most important sector of the economy. That doesn't need any uh, PhD or something like that for you mm. to understand that, mm. you know. 
And thank God, he's somebody who knows it. You know, mm. he worked in the oil uh, Exxon Mobil before, before uh, living and then forming his own companies and what have you. He has dealt with every aspect of the economy you can talk about in this country. Well, well, so if, if, I don't know what he's waiting for. Uh, for, for. As we wrap up now, if you are invited to join the government to uh, offer your own support, will you accept that? Definitely, it's my country. Why can't I accept that? Because I know what is happening. Mm. I know that we are bleed. Your heart will bleed if you know what is happening in this country. Mm. And I know it because I've been given the opportunity to investigate the oil and gas sector. You know, by way of working for Nike, mm. by work, working for Federal Bureau of uh, Finance, by way of working for Federal Trade Investment, where the the crude oil business itself, mm. the value chain from the start of it to the end of it, I have investigated it. You know, I've been hired as a consultant. Yeah. I know what is happening. I know where the pains are. Okay. I know where the leakages are. Mm. You know, and I have also submitted, you know, proposal to the government mm. to look into it. You know, so okay. that because oh. because I'm not just saying it offhand that I or, or just making up stories. No, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I have document documents that I've submitted to Naiti mm. that they must do some remediation. Mm. Quickly, otherwise we will lose uh, this economy. Uh, uh, all right, your role in the energy sector is well documented. I must thank you, Engineer Yabagishi Sani, energy expert, and of course, National Chairman, Interparty Advisory Council. I must thank you for your time on business daily. Thank you, Yusuf. We for appreciate your contributions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, with that is a wrap on the show. Today we'll be back on Monday. I am Yusuf Akogun.